Lion dies in the offlane. Unfortunate. Really? Yeah. Don't touch my rune. So you're whacking him. Um, you probably want to come over here and hit him from this side. It would be my suggestion because right now you're just tanking this range creep every time. And it's actually going to push the wave into the Legion Commander because those like three or four hits that he's doing on you now is not hitting your creep wave, which well, means that your creep wave is actually going to push. Pause it. I mean, you can also just run farther back where the creep will not aggro to you. Like, yep. you could hit him from behind him, closer to his tower. Like, if you, Over yeah, here. back here. Exactly. Then it's not it's not going to aggro. And that's why Donnie's suggesting you go to the left, because he was standing to the left. Now that he's on the right, you want to go to the right. You know what I mean? Like, you want to follow him around and focus on those creeps and not pushing those creeps while hitting him. That That is your only job as a support, is to get as much damage on this guy. What, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, basically then, where I'm pinging is where I'd want you to be standing. So right now, instead of running back over here, I'd run like this and come at him from here. And then he's yeah. going to reposition himself to get away from you. Then Okay, so you TP'd away. This is, a mistake. This, is an, this is interesting. I, I don't know if it's a mistake exactly, so let's see. So it's Lion Sven in the off lane versus a tri lane. Um, I would say in an ideal world, you actually just destroy this legion commander for a few minutes then tp'ing is fine but th this has probably not been long enough y you want to give your pa an advantage so that you're not going to so the legion commander still won't be able to lane up there leave. like you only want to leave once you've done your job of securing the safe lane if it's legion versus pa legion is going to get as much as the pa if not more that, yep. that's the only problem here yeah basically... i like that you went to the tri lane that's fine but j just later i think is is the ideal situation yeah, basically when it comes to early game rotations as a support, what you want to do is you want to secure the lane first. And what we say when we say secure, what we mean when we say secure is you want it to be where the core in that lane can essentially function as you plus that core in terms of being able to zone the other hero and control the creep wave. Yeah. So. Which I think would be like PA probably needs like a two level advantage or something in order yeah. to do that. And frankly, against the Legion Commander, it's actually pretty hard to get there just because Legion can continually just overwhelming his overwhelming odds of the lane. But you can feed off of the Legion. Like, she can die yeah. in this lane over and over. Yeah. I agree. So, coming and, here. Um... And here's, here's why I immediately said that this is a mistake, is in addition to leaving this PA alone without having gotten that big advantage, I think that having your off lane die once or twice and then i mean obviously it's just once but having your off lane feed first blood to a tri lane and then you immediately go to that lane so your off lane is already behind on experience and it's behind on gold and now you're bringing a third body to soak experience and you haven't actually gotten anything yourself so you're basically just adding like another leech to to the lane that really can't contest anymore because already lost the lane I think a, a, a kind of a issue that I see happen a lot when rotations like this occur in pubs is, let's say you kill this pudge, which I assume you do because you're three stunners and he probably dies because he's a big useless fat hero. What if he goes and just flex your PA? Yep. Like, you you have essentially just come to this lane, they're still getting experience because you just killed a pudge, and then your PA is losing. So it's like, it, it really risks losing the game to, to leave your lane because the, you're putting the PA at risk. As opposed to just having this off lane that might feed a few deaths, but as long as they're getting experience, like this is the reason people don't do tri lanes because even if they kill your off lane a few times, they're splitting the experience so many ways, and and the the dual off lane isn't. They're only splitting it two ways. That the dual off lane is probably going to actually end up with more experience. So it's it's super risky to run a tri lane, and I think you justify it if it's a tri lane versus tri lane scenario. Yeah. Like you're you're making it worth it for them. Because you're splitting experience now too. It's a yeah. huge risk on their part, and it's it's pretty bad. Yeah, and and like you said, what can actually happen is even if this pudge dies, if he doesn't die, he can also do this. 
But he can just immediately go here, and suddenly now they have the experience advantage in the safe lane. And you guys are probably not going to kill a jug. I mean, you yeah, could potentially, could, but that core doesn't really die. That, you're that's probably not, a... not going to kill the jug. So they're actually going to end up higher level than you, and the pudge is going to be able to pressure your your PA because the PA right. is the same level as the pudge basically. So he can't just like body the the pudge out of the game. It goes back to like the point of laning is to secure control of those creeps. And killing this Pudge doesn't really do anything for that because he's not the one that's taking the creeps. It's the Juggernaut. And you're not killing, you're realistically not going to kill a Juggernaut or even pressure a Juggernaut with a Shadow Shaman. And at least not more than like a Lion Sven will. And you can actually pressure a Legion Commander. This is one thing like when I play Pudge, like look, he doesn't care at all. He's just hitting you. He's manning up. Yeah. Like this one thing when I, when I play Pudge, a lot of the time I'll literally just sit in the safe lane and pull because I can't kill any of the cores in any of the lanes. And then there's no point in doing those actions when it's not going to result in anything just based on how those cores function. And I think I think against a Juggernaut, you're not going to pressure. Against a Queen of Pain, you're not going to kill him unless you smoke or get like a Hex off from trees. Um, I guess one other thing to note, if, even if you are making a play like this, it's better to pair it up with something that's also more efficient. Like get a Rune and Gank, uh, Ward, while also TPing to secure a lane like you could come bot kill bot and then go to mid and kill mid but also ward both of those locations so that way it's less of a risk to do this sort of rotation because you're also getting other stuff done as well but just rotating means that if that action does not pay off that is a bad action however if you rotate and you have other actions that you're accomplishing during that even if it doesn't pay off which this kind of didn't you're still going to get something out of that and then you can just rotate back up to the pa and say you know what i tried i tried to gank didn't work i got some wards down now i'm going to go back to the pa and the sacrifice of the pa not getting farm was made worth it because of those wards yep and surprise surprise pudge did go to the top lane so he's up here now and your lion is up here as well which i would say is probably worse than a shadow shaman pa lane but but, but now the thing it's a lion that's up there against an offlaner that has levels so yeah. it's like it doesn't even if you went back up there it would still be harder for you to to do that because there's levels and then pudge is there with levels too and and they're zoning the the pa like they're not even laning yeah so this is a an advantageous lane and then the bot lane is obviously advantageous as well yeah so basically that rotation it's it's kind of it goes back to that that sort of old maxim which is that a lot of time as a support, you want to do too much and you can actually lose the game by trying to do too much. A lot of the time you just need to secure one lane or two lanes, but most people are too afraid of losing any lanes that they end up losing all right. of their lanes as a result. That's that's like that's like a super good thing to remember. Like if you're going to remember anything going into pubs, it's just win the do your job. Like win the lane that you're supposed to win. Don't try to win every lane. If, if you think about that fact alone and, 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 and like repeat it in your head as like a mantra, you will legitimately win so many pubs. And I can tell you as somebody who's been dabbling in like the four roll, um, essentially like with Skywrath, for example, I might rotate mid only if it looks really good, but my main focus is pressuring that off lane and I do not fucking touch the safe lane. I completely ignore it because you just can't spread yourself that thin or you'll lose every single lane. Right. How fact, often I would say how often when you were learning four did you try to do too much, would you say? All all the time. Like and then it's, right? it's it's always so game losing. You always just end up not losing one lane. You lose every lane if you do that. That's the problem. And yeah. it's essentially this fact that the side lanes are too far away from each other. You can actually split yourself if you're a good support between mid and and a side lane, but yeah. you can never split yourself between the two side lanes or the three lanes. It is just not possible. Yeah, and the only way that you can split yourself between the two side lanes is to use a TP, which basically like ensures that you lose two other lanes because now you have no way to reinforce them. Yes. Like, that's the yes, whole point nice. of being able to go between the bottom lane and the mid lane, for example, as a support. You can be like, okay, I harass them, blah, 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 blah. My offlaner is now in control of the creep wave here. I don't need to be here anymore, so I'm going to run, check the rune. Then I'm going to go maybe gank mid, and I'm doing this all just by simply walking from one place to the other. And then I, I see them, oh, they're diving my offlaner as I'm walking to mid. Guess what? Because I walked to the mid lane, I still have a TP, and I can come back to the offlane and help this guy. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I totally agree. That was definitely one of the biggest things for me to learn as a support is that you generally just like one of your lanes is going to lose. 
And that's okay. Bottom line is it's incredibly high risk with a decent reward, but it's so high risk. And that is why if you ever see a rotation made in a competitive game, there's always a second or third purpose that comes with it as well, just to make it less risky. And even then, they can completely throw a game by trying to do something like that.